Hello dear friends, a very good morning and may God bless you all by enlightening your understanding. This is the greatest blessing that God wants to give us, that our understanding may be enlightened, revealed, so that we may understand, comprehend His word, His will and what is about to happen. By the way, when Jesus said to his disciples that no stone would be left upon another, the disciples came to him privately and said to him, tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? What sign will be of your coming and of the end of the, world, of the age? So you see, the end is already determined and no one can change that. There's no politicians, no weapon, there's no army, money, power. There's nothing in this world that can impede the end of this world, just as it had a perfect beginning, a perfect beginning, however, because of sin, the world deteriorated, Human, humanity deteriorated, and you, you see what's happened today, a world that is completely destroyed with disorder, a chaos, a society that is very disorganized and does not accept the discipline and order of God's word. So what did God do in the times of Noah? What he did in Noah's time, those things that were happening, and what's happening today is worse than it happened in the times of Noah. And what did God do? He destroyed all the earth with water. But the family of Noah, he saved, Noah and his family. And today, Jesus speaks about the end of times and the same thing will happen. There's no prayer, fasting, there's no consecration, there's nothing in this world that can prevent the end of the age. But before it comes to an end, Jesus will come to take his church, to rapture his people, those who've believed in him and paid the price, they sacrificed their will. They've become, let's say, eunuchs. They castrated their will in order to then do the will of God. So Jesus answered and said to the disciples, take heed that no one deceives you. Take heed that no one deceives you. Only the Holy Spirit to reveal, to show who are the deceivers and who are the truthful ones. Only the Holy Spirit. Only He and He alone is capable of making us take heed so that we are not deceived by the false prophets. And he says here, take heed that no one deceives you. So in order for the person to be, let's say, kept safe from the false, the false Christs, they have to have the Holy Spirit. And that's why the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God insists on this. If you haven't received the Holy Spirit yet, you will hardly be able to resist you won't be able to keep going because it's too difficult. If baptized with the Holy Spirit is not easy, imagine without this baptism. So he says, take heed that no one deceives you, he said to the disciples. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Of course, that all those who say I am the Christ they will already be stamped as a false prophet. 
But it's not the, the way that the devil works. The devil works subtly. He works with those who do not submit to the will of the Father. The devil works with those who submit to their own will. Sometimes the devil himself is in a person and leads them to obeying all the demons, the father of darkness, the devil, and the person doesn't know. Why? Because there are demons, there are deceiving spirits. A deceiving spirit is the worst of them all because he pretends to be a, someone who, who, who he isn't. The hypocrites, right? The religious ones that Jesus condemned so harshly in his time. You can see this later on in here in Matthew itself. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 23. You are going to find the text where Jesus condemns vehemently the hypocrites, the official religious of the time. So Jesus said, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name. Many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Not only will you hear of wars, but of rumors of wars. And we have war as well as rumors of wars nowadays. You watch the news and you, you see, you are going to hear about wars and also the rumors of wars because the world, as it says, it's a pressure cooker and it's about to explode. So Jesus said, see that you are not troubled. See, those who are of God, those who are disciples, those who have the Holy Spirit, they are not troubled by hearing of wars and let alone the rumors of wars because they know that it will happen. It's unavoidable. And they only keep their faith. They maintain their faith alive and active according to the word of God so that they will be at peace with themselves. He said, See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So Jesus said, See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. It must come to pass. It's necessary that this will all happen. But the end is not yet. Wow. If we are seeing all this mess all over the planet and we think it's already the end, Jesus is saying, no, it's not the end yet. Dear friend, before such informations, what will you do? Will you hide in a hole? Will you build a bunker so that you can be safe there from everything? No, there is nothing. Jesus said it straight away. He was clear. No stone will be left upon another. So it's pointless for you to try and hide. Either you are of God and you keep your faith. You keep your faith as the apple of your eyes in order to take possession of the great prize the great prize that is waiting for us, or you are one of those people who don't care at all. You know, I will continue to live my life, satisfying my flesh. Then you know, no stone will be left upon another, meaning no flesh will be left. Everything will come to an end. Everything will come to an end. There's no doubt about that. So those who are of the faith, those who are born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, they are not troubled. They are not terrorized. Why? Because they know that this is unavoidable. But those who are not of the faith, they are afraid. Those who are not of the faith, they are in doubt. Because those who are of the faith 
are born of the spirit of faith. Those who are of doubt were born of doubt, which is the devil. The devil is the one that creates doubt. Just as the word of God creates faith, the word of the devil creates doubt, fear, terror. So the children of darkness are going to be scared. They are going to be desperate. And what can be done? That's, that's what we do. We have to hear the word of God and submit to, to this word. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, his discipline, and all these things shall be added. That's what is written and promised to those who enter the kingdom of God. So, dear friend, our advice is this. Evaluate your life, consider your life, consider your faith. You may be from a good church, including the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. You may be a member, an assistant, an auxiliary pastor, a pastor, a bishop, whatever, a bishop's wife. You can be whatever you want to be or whatever you are being right now. It doesn't matter. What matters is what is inside of you. That's what matters. Evaluate your life. Analyze your faith. Evaluate your behavior. Evaluate your tastes, your inclinations. And in case you are inclined towards evil, then what do you need to do? You need to return to what is righteous and correct and clean and of integrity. And this is a decision. It's not a matter of feeling or feeling something, a feeling of the heart. No, it's a matter of decision. There are people saying, oh, Bishop, I'm going to give up. It seems, it seems that God is doing a favor to save them. It seems that God is doing a favor to God by being members of a church or faithful to God. It seems like that's what it is. So, dear friend, God doesn't need us. He doesn't need anything. He is, He was, He is, and will always be the same. However, Whoever wants righteousness, whoever loves righteousness and seek it and seek it with all of their strength and energy and they fit in within this righteousness, the word of God, then these will be saved. But because the Holy Spirit knows those who are sincere and those who truly want the truth, but the others, unfortunately, will spend eternity in hell. That's the reality. So there is no more or less. It's either yes or no. Those who go, you go. Those who want, will stay behind. May God bless you all. And let us continue praying. Praying for those who are lost. Let's keep praying for those who are saved, for them to remain saved. For example, we had this tragedy a tragedy that everyone saw coming and how many youths lost their life in the rave there in Israel. How many youths? Hundreds of them died. Hundreds of youths. Many parents. Thousands of parents are disappointed and naturally even disappointed in God. How come my child was there dancing, having fun, and all of a sudden this happens, and I lost my child. Well, the point is, dear friend, we do not know the time, isn't it? We know nothing. But those who are of God, they remain strong until the end. These will receive the crown of life. Those who believe will go. Those who don't will stay behind. This Thursday, after tomorrow, don't forget, we are all going to go to the altar. Let us bring our family members, our loved ones. 
let us bring the name or their names written to present before God on the altar. If they can come, if they want to come, great. If not, no problem. You as a mother, a father who love your children, bring, bring their names if it's not possible to bring them, okay? Let's go to the altar. Let's go before the shelter of the Most High. Let us take refuge in the shelter of the Most High. You know that the altar is the shelter of the Most High. And the altar that represents God, that is the Holy Spirit, when the person dwells in the altar, then they are dwelling under the wings of the Holy Spirit. He is their guide, the guide that leads us to eternal life. So he will keep us safe from all evil. May God bless you all, and I see you tomorrow. Let us continue meditating in Matthew 24. But you should read, you must read, so you are familiarized with the biblical terms here, okay? May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow. Praise God.